Hello, good morning, and welcome to Out of Spec Motoring. It's very early in the morning, and we are moving to Colorado. Uh, we're going to drive this U-Haul with our beloved electric smart car. That'll be one vehicle. The second vehicle will be the Tesla Model 3 Performance that we've had for a year and has 65,000 miles. And the third vehicle is the BMW i3. Is that going to be able to make it out there? I don't know. How are we going to coordinate this move? Just join us on the driving portion of this move. I won't make you do any heavy lifting. And we have the U-Haul packed over here, Big Bertha. We have, of course, the electric smart car on the back of the trailer hooked up. That only has a 50 or 60 mile range and no fast charging. So there's no way that would even be able to make it out of the state of North Carolina in the direction we're heading. The i3, same range, about 60 miles on the highway, but it has the little scooter motor, the little range extender. Is that thing gonna blow up from running for so long? I've never driven an i3 on a trip this long. That'll be primarily what I am driving, but we'll switch on and off. We gotta go from here in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, all the way to Fort Collins, Colorado, in three cars with three totally different uh, fueling methods. This is straight gas. The i3 is gas and electric, but really limited range on both. And of course the Tesla is full electric. Let's see how this goes. We have Blue and Ellie. They're getting ready to go. Are you excited for the move? Not really. It's early. I'm sorry to wake you up so early. Yeah, sorry guys. This is the last bit of stuff right here. All right, we have everything pretty much out of all of the rooms. It's looking nice and clean. We should check the back porch because we don't want to leave something back here. Blue stay. Oh yeah, all good. That's all their furniture. Yep. Moving to Fort Collins, we're gonna leave that tree because we don't really want to bring it with us and they want it. So other than that, we're ready to go. All right. This is the Tesla Model 3 that will be going all the way to Colorado. Nothing new for this car, of course. It is charged up to 94%, ready to rock and roll. This is the Ford F650 V10 gas. Wish it was a diesel, but it's not. And uh, it's got 36,000 miles, pure fury right here. And this is what we'll be hauling all of our stuff and blue out to Colorado. Actually, no, the dogs are going in the Tesla in the back because they have dog mode. Alyssa's gonna drive the Tesla. We are gonna take the U-Haul on the first leg. We are just going to Raleigh, North Carolina. Listen to that startup sound on the V10. And uh, we're gonna go pick up some wheels and tires in Raleigh, and then it's off to Greensboro to collect the I-3, which is with Timon and all of his stuff because he's moving out with us too. Alyssa is just ahead in the Tesla there. We are merging onto the highway for an 1800 mile journey across the country to Fort Collins. And let's get up to speed in the big U-Haul loaded to the max. This thing drives like a big truck because it is. We'll test the acceleration out here. Engine is cold, but it's a fleet vehicle and it probably doesn't care. So let's give it the full beans once we merge onto the highway. We're definitely gonna need it. And we have achieved wide open throttle. That is all she will do right there. <laughs> you can see Perfect, how Kyle. Perfect car for Kyle. Yep, my dad's here with me. We're still floored. We haven't even hit 50. There it is, 50 miles an hour. Engine temperature's coming up quickly and the heater in the cabin's going much faster now after this, as you can imagine. so excited to be out there. You guys do not understand. We are in the car. We are headed to Goldsboro, Green, I forget. But anyways, for our i3, uh, we're bringing that out as well. Kyle and his dad are way behind me. They have the U-Haul and the smart car trailered and we are officially on this journey out west and it's gonna take a long time but we are all here for it blue and ellie are here for it so we're all gonna do good 
We have now arrived in Raleigh. You can see Mike sitting over there. He's gonna help us unload the tires out of that beautiful Volvo V90 R design. Love that thing. Uh, the big U-Haul V10 just sat at Redline the entire way. I think we got six miles to the gallon. It does 77 miles an hour, and that's where this thing is going to live for the next 1,800 miles. The smart car, let's make sure it's strapped down properly because we don't want that going anywhere. I have the state of charge on the smart car sitting at 39% for the trip, and uh, oh my goodness. we have just stuff in the U-Haul. <laughs> So uh, it looks pretty good. Straps are still nice and tight and uh, gotta love it. That's not going anywhere. Obligatory statement, of course. All right, there goes the super mover, the 26 footer, big Bertha. We're following behind. And the smart car. And the smart car. We're gonna get great efficiency following this thing. Will we though? Yeah, because it'll push all the air out of the way. Well, wouldn't the smart be a little bit of a buffer to make it go away? Not really. Blue is <laughs> very interested. Off we go to Greensboro. Gotta go get Timon stuff. Timon is our videographer, if I haven't said that yet. And our car. Right, and, and he has Alyssa's <laughs> i3. Oh yes, rolling into Greensboro here. Rolling in, going to get the i3 and all of Timon's stuff. Only about 10 minutes away right now. Not bad at all. We have arrived in Greensboro. Time in's over here. Are you excited to move to Colorado? Yes. Yes, we're all excited. We're gonna go put, fill up the rest of the U-Haul with your stuff now. And then the I-3 is just over here. Thanks for keeping it nice and safe for us. Right over there is the I-3. How was your time driving it? Sketchy. Really? Yeah, Why? The, the hurricane winds. Oh, yeah. 75 it, miles an hour. It's <laughs> very <laughs> affected by wind. <laughs> <that car. laughs> it's very rocky. All right, let's get this thing loaded up. So while we are loading up the truck with all of time and stuff, Alyssa took the Tesla over to the supercharger on the other side of town. She's charging up the Tesla. The U-Haul still has plenty of range left. And how much fuel's in the I-3? Uh, full tank of gas. Full tank of gas. And what'd you charge it up to last night? Uh, 80 something. 80 something percent he went to electrify america and charged it up so we should be good to go pulling into our first supercharging session of the whole trip okay. Maybe throw this up there somewhere maybe on top of the grill I don't know. All right, so we're going to take the I-3 out to Colorado. Got the keys right here. Timon's going to drive the Focus RS out here later this week. And uh, I should say out there later this week. He's got his Tesla Fest East sticker still on this thing. Comment below if you think Timon should drive an electric car. I do. He doesn't like them. He likes all the noise. And we have the I-3 already packed. Let's take a look at our state of charge. See how this thing's doing. Jumping in. Let's see, we have 35,000 miles. Man, we drive this thing a lot. 71% state of charge. We're gonna go to Kyle's profile right here. Change profile. Don't need the music. We'll go here. We need to immediately turn on the range extender. If I remember how, it's up here. Range extender on. I also have that coded into number one hotkey. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to hold the battery percentage at 71% or 70.5%. Uh, and oh, I turned the car off. Let me turn it on, rehold. And what this will do is it'll just keep the little scooter motor in the back running enough to keep it hopefully topped up. We have a full tank of fuel, 90 miles projected on fuel, 52 miles on electric. Man, we may have to get a little gas can for some of these big stretches out west. Here goes the big U-Haul. And Alyssa just made it to the supercharger. So she will be a little bit behind on this trip. It'll be interesting to see how everyone kind of gets staggered going out west. Can he make the turn? And he is zigzagging all the way through here. Nice. There goes my little smarty. Well, it's time to change this to... Our new address in Fort Collins.
that is what our trip looks like right there. We're going all the way across the country. <laughs> Fort Collins, Colorado. Here we go. Got the U-Haul way behind us. Alyssa sitting at the supercharger right up off, not this exit, but the next one. And we are all looking pretty good. We're gonna be scattered out today, I'm sure. And I guess everyone will vlog on their own. At least I've asked the others to share the highlights. And we'll see if this video comes out well. Going by Volkswagen, Audi, Greensboro, and then of course, Foreign Cars Italia. This is Maserati, Ferrari, Aston, Porsche. Fantastic dealership. And uh, they have some great hardware in there. have already reached our first almost interception of the trip. Uh, Alyssa just merged onto the highway right up in front of us and uh, I'm able to track the Tesla through the app of course which is kind of cool. I'm not sure if she'll drive that the whole way out there. I think she kind of wants to uh, but I got to tell you the i3 is doing a fantastic job of steering itself. Again if you go back and watch I believe my Audi e-tron pickup road trip uh, where I went to go collect the e-tron. I talked about this system but we've coded the i3 to do active steering it's called traffic jam assistant and then we also raised the top speed of that system to go well above the car's top speed so it'll steer itself all the way up to its maximum speed of 94 miles an hour uh, it's very sketchy above 70 it kind of wiggles around in the lane but you really got to pay attention it's not safe not something the general public should have access to uh, but it is uh, nice on these long trips you just got to pay attention so no issues there and uh, yeah I, I guess she's gonna go up to Mount Airy or to Withville to charge I'm not sure which uh, we need to fill up for gas in about 60 miles, so we have another hour of driving or so before we need to go fill up. So far, seems to be working great. No issues with the cars. Everything's packed up really nice. Let's hope it stays that way. Both the i3 and the U-Haul have about a quarter of a tank left. We're gonna pull in here because the next fueling station is not for about 15 miles and we only have 13 miles of range left. Alyssa is right up the road as we have been tracking the Tesla uh, and this Sheets that we're stopping at also does have a supercharger, but she does not need to stop here. She charged enough to get up to Withville. So she's gonna get up there, get the car charging. We're gonna stop in here get some snacks, get some fuel in both of these cars. Right here, you can see the superchargers down there, but she did not have to stop at those. And uh, we are off, check out that old cool truck. That thing is sweet. Time to see what that bill will be. Yesterday, we filled that thing up and it was $105 or something like that. Yikes, this is gonna be a big fuel bill for this move. i is filling up with fuel, U-Haul, not so much. The i is already done. Let's see how much fuel it has. <laughs> I love your truck. That is so sick. This thing has such a tiny tank. Look at that. 1.8 gallons or so. It's coded to do 2.4 and there was a little left in there. So that's about all we're going to squeeze in. Yikes. That is expensive. Normally I'm on the other side of the building because the superchargers are right back over there. The Mount Airy superchargers. But wow, it'd be cool if this was electric, but it literally would have no range and it would be so heavy if you fill it with batteries. These will stay gas for some time, I suspect. At least a number of five years plus, we'll still have these gas burners on the road. But you know what? It's a useful tool for this move. Well, that stop took almost as long as a supercharger stop. I think I was 15 minutes or so we were here. Just feels like forever. And of course, here are the superchargers uh, behind the building, but we don't need those. It'd be cool if we could charge the i3 on those, but we cannot. We have a full tank of fuel, 91 miles projected range on fuel, and we are off to Withville Supercharger in Virginia where we should meet Alyssa.
Friends, we have a big hill climb here. We got the i3's range extender working hard. It's pegged. The U-Haul is wide open throttle, I'm sure. And it's still managing 65 miles an hour, which is pretty good. But we're just starting this hill out. We have a long climb, 12 miles almost. So let's see how it does. You can see here on the screen of the i3, we are down to 60% state of charge with the range extender working as hard as possible. If we did not have this car coded to hold state of charge, the car would be limiting power right now because it starts the range extender with 6% battery remaining. And uh, we are already below 6% of where we started to hold it. So this is a necessary upgrade for i3 owners, especially for these long hill climbs. We'd be limited to 30 miles an hour right now if we did not have the engine kicked on at a higher state of charge where we can just eat into the battery a little bit more. The U-Haul is doing well. Again, just pegged at wide open throttle, but that thing's pulling up nice and strong, holding about 65 miles per hour up this steep incline here in Virginia. All right, we have made it to the Withville supercharger. Time to plug in. All right, I think that's our peak-ish, kind of. I'm gonna go let these doggos out. Hi, Blue. Especially Ellie, she looks like she's got her poop face on, so we'll we'll go take care of that. Hey, Bubby. The dogs are sniffing around, going potty. I think we might play a little fetch with Blue to get some energy out of him while we wait for our charge. We stopped it at the Withville Supercharger. It's right there. The dogs are running around. There's a great area back here for them to run. And uh, U-Haul's in the, the cul-de-sac over there. The cars are charging just behind here. Maybe we can get an above angle of that. Let's take a look. You can see the cars are charging at the Supercharger down there in Withville. We stopped in, caught up with you. You're pretty much charged up to go, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I just got a, like two more minutes. Okay, yeah, and I gotta fill up the I-3 with gas again. Uh, not that I have to have another 30 miles of range, but may as well. You can see it looking good down there. The dogs are just running around up here. And there's the U-Haul, looking proud. We are heading out now. Alyssa just unplugged. What are you, I'm getting my picture taken for what? Hold up, this is gonna be a classic shot with the, with the U-Haul. Oh, we got oh, the U-Haul yeah. and the I-3 in there. I think Alyssa's coming behind us. We're gonna go run to this gas station right down the road here just because we can. And we're already stopped and off the highway. The next stop will be Charleston, West Virginia. We're gonna go up into the mountains. And so uh, we'll see if we can get gassed up and then caught up with the U-Haul. I'm sure we can. So let's run over and fill it up. All right, we need to put 93 in the I-3. There we go. Just a quick splash and dash. Supercharger's right up over there. And we are filling. I'm only expecting about a gallon or so. And this is the life of road tripping I-3s. You just fill it up whenever you have the opportunity because who knows when you'll be on that stretch without fuel. There we go, 1.4. Wow, that's pretty good. More than I was expecting. We just gotta get every last drop in there. I know it says not to in the manual, but I've been doing this for years with I-3s and it's fine. There we go, topped all the way, didn't spill any. Perfect, cap on and let's go. Whoops, so I definitely made a wrong turn. Kyle's in the lead now in our little race to the finish. Um, yeah, total mistake, ah, mistake by me, another mistake by me, but I'll be turned around in no time and then I'll just blow right past him, you'll see it. Welcome to West Virginia, wild and wonderful. And I'm leading the race, the I-3 
is leading the race. The U-Haul, I guess, left after us, and Alyssa made a wrong turn in the Tesla. Therefore, we are easily in the lead. We have a rest area in six miles with Starbucks and fuel, I think. We only have one mile of fuel remaining, which means we're not gonna make it, folks. Uh, not good, not terrible. We'll have to eat into the battery a bit. But now the goal is to get the range extender to charge the battery up as high as possible because we're gonna have to run on the battery pack. So we're regenning down the hill and charging it with the range extender. Hopefully we can charge it up a little bit before it shuts off. Uh, this was just a big stretch with no gas stations. If we didn't have the Rex hold on the battery pack, there's no way we would have made it. Maybe I would have had to drive way slow and keep the revs down on the Rex, but I don't know, that is pretty sketchy for sure. No big deal though, just hope it doesn't happen when we have no battery left in the pack. Exit 42 has gas and it's closer. That is where we're going. We're at zero miles of fuel range. We are not going to the rest area because this has the closest fuel right off this exit. You can see we used about 2% of battery power, not the end of the world. We're gonna find one of these fueling stations, fill up, and we'll see if we can get back on the road before Alyssa goes by, although I suspect she will overtake us when we stop for gas. All right, topped up into drive. We need to hold state of charge, selected, and we have 92 miles predicted range. Let's get out of here. Charleston, West Virginia, here we go. We are 56 miles away. Is Alyssa in front of us? Is she behind us? I do not have the answer to that, but I do kind of want to win. So here we go, wide open throttle. As hard as the i3 can go right here, ripping it. It's actually pretty fast. This thing moves pretty nicely. <laughs> Look who we've caught up to. The little i3 race car right here swerving through these mountains of West Virginia, tire squealing. Love this car, it really handles great. Just gotta let the weight transfer. And oh yes, we've caught up to Alyssa in the Tesla. How about that? Here we go, going by. You're probably just sitting on autopilot. <laughs> we finally caught up to each other. Who will make it there first? We'll see. Charleston, West Virginia Supercharger. Oh yeah, love this spot. You gotta hit the charge port open. There we go. And you're juicing up. You're welcome. Thank Hi, you. Buppy. You saw me on the road. You got so excited. <laughs> yeah. So we arrived here with 12%, not 13. Kyle plugged me in a little too fast for me to actually vlog this part. Blue is being noisy, but we'll see where our next stop is. The girls for this leg of the trip, Blue went with Kyle, so Ellie and I will chill out. I already gave her a chicken nugget, don't tell Blue. Um, so we're getting headed to go to Lexington, Kentucky is our next stop. And we should get there with about 13%. So, you ready Ellie? Let's go! Alyssa's heading out, she's charged up to 93%. The plan is to stretch it to Lexington. I've never done that stretch before. I always stop in Huntington, Virginia, uh, West Virginia, but we got lunch here and let the car charge up. So she's gonna do a long stretch out there. Then we have to make a short stretch after that to Louisville because you know that stretch from Louisville to Effingham is like almost 200 miles, which in this car on the 20 inch wheels with the roof bars is a big ask. It's low speed and you're kind of just cruising. So she's gonna top up just until the car tapers at Lexington and then we will meet her in Louisville. And that's where we have to do a near 100% charge, at least 95%. So have a good trip by Ellie. I'm taking blue in the i3 with me over here he is very concerned as to why mom's leaving yes don't worry we're gonna see her in a minute and you're eating some food oh yeah oh yeah cap and d's yeah it's nasty That's fish nasty. yeah road trip food give it a nice healthy rev yeah little oh. little pop and bang little too pop. yeah nice yeah. My dad driving the U-Haul, of course. 
blue. Can you believe it, buddy? <laughs> He's trying to take a nap every time I talk, he wakes up. And we are now behind the Smarty. That's your car, right in front of us. You should ride in there. Nope, that wouldn't be safe. You are too cute. to these chargers just a quick top off we ramped up to 117 and i thought i traded the right dog because one of them was foofing a lot during the first part of the trip but it ends up to be this one ellie you stink <sighs> yeah so we fixed ellie's problem she is all set to go and we are all set to go. So let's get headed to Louisville, Kentucky and get back on the road. I give Kyle a lot of credit for these videos because it is exhausting to drive so far. I hate it, <laughs> but I don't mind riding along with him, but I don't have him with me. So it's very hard and very lonely because Ellie does not talk back to me even though how hard I try, but she does not speak. Seems Alyssa has just finished her supercharging session. Blue is just hanging out, being a great dog. Uh, we are almost to Louisville. It's a big stretch, of course. We've had to stop three times for fuel already. We have five miles remaining on our tank. The battery has sucked its way down to 28% so far. Got ourselves a hitchhiker here. Sorry, dude. Um, yeah, Blue's already taking up that seat. <laughs> Basically, um, we had great uh, range extender stuff going through West Virginia. We'd charge on the downhills, it was all good. But now that it's just kind of flat and 80 miles an hour, it's having a tough time keeping up. Uh, and I also shut the car off at the last fuel stop when we were way drained down and I forgot to do my trick of getting out in the passenger seat to hold the state of charge up high. Uh, anyway, um, we're totally good. I may try to find a charger in Louisville, maybe an Electrify America and DC fast charge this car up to 80% or so for the next little bit, or I'll just keep driving it on Rex and I'll do that all tonight. We'll find a hotel with a destination charger. Really nice land cruiser coming up here next to us. Love these things. You can go back on the Out of Spec Reviews channel and see a review we did of the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. Uh, celebrating its storied past. What an awesome car. Anyway, we have uh, three miles to empty. I think we're exactly three miles to our exit. We'll probably have to run on battery power for just a couple of hundred feet to get to the gas station and we'll all be good. We are coming to the highway ramp here. We have just ran out of gas and uh, coasting in on battery power, no problem. Got in an Eco Pro Plus. I will say though that the mileage to empty calculator here on this screen is just so off. When it says 15 miles, it's really closer to seven. And that's after it getting used to how we're driving. So now I need to figure out which way the gas stations are. All right, the Valero is where we are going. I guess the entrance is just over here. Let's get this thing juicing up literally with some fossil fuels feels so silly man this makes like road tripping a tesla so much better than this small tank thing but again it's meant to get you around in a pinch it's not meant for big road trips like this I arrived here with a solid 13 percent now it's time to plug in. Best coffee shop ever. We were actually winning the race. We were ahead of everyone. Again, Alyssa stopped at the last supercharger to top up. So I did a search and I found a DC fast charger at this Porsche dealership right down the street. Plug in charge. I mean, I did not enter any payment details. It sounds like it's a totally free CCS. DC charger. I have no idea on the output speeds that it can do, uh, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Communi communicating, and now we are charging up. Wow, that thing is really loud though, isn't it? Take a look at some of this software. Outputting seven kilowatt, eight, it's ramping up. We'll see what it gets up to. The i3 should accept about 48 kilowatts at this state of charge. 
you know I love Porsches, and so this will be great to go walk around, take blue for a walk around the Porsche lot. Uh, really nice of Porsche of Louisville to have this charger in here. It says it's publicly available. They don't mind people charging. That's great. Um, so we're just going to top up the i3 until everyone gets to the supercharger about a mile away, and then we'll just unplug and go. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is we were driving more quickly than the range extender could keep up. Therefore, we were losing battery capacity. I think it's it was down to 25% or so when I plugged in here. And so if we're going to continue driving tonight, especially with the colder temperatures, uh, we could have done it, but it's really nice just to have a little bit of extra battery buffer. And it also doesn't work. The battery is hard sitting at, you know, one or 2% just drained the whole time. Look at all these nice Tycons they have here. Very nicely specced cars, beautiful 992s inside. Another Tycon, that Tycon was here when I was here a few weeks ago. A friend here was looking at Tycons. And uh, we're gonna charge the i3 up to 50%. Should only take another two or three minutes. Very quick charging curve to 50% and then it tapers. Uh, but it's a tiny battery pack, so 50 kilowatts is quick. My phone's on 1%. Blue is trying to play. I know you have a lot of energy. And so we're just going to top up. We'll meet everyone over at the supercharger down the street. 50% state of charge. We have unplugged. Charging is stopped. Again, we were here six minutes. Just a very quick top up. Only added 4.7 kilowatt hours. But on the i3, that makes a big difference. Let's run over to the supercharger. Oh, I can feel the heat over here from the range extender. That's right. That thing is a full internal combustion engine. Off we go, Blue. Good boy. Stop and ready to take on this really long stretch. Kyle has unplugged for me because he is my Tesla roadside assistant service man. And there was a Fireworks. firework of some sort. It's Halloween today. It is Halloween. So we're gonna go grab some food and then head on the road and get going onto this next unplugged. really long. Big stretch, don't drive fast because it's cold and it's pretty windy and it's 198 miles. So just keep it nice and easy. Right. I'll tell Blue that. Let's go. We got Alyssa topped up to about 99%, I think. Blue's having fun sticking his head out the window. He loves doing that. Uh, we got the i3 charged up to 50%. It'll just give us a little bit of buffer on this big leg here. The U-Haul, my dad just left and went uh, down towards Mount Vernon. We haven't selected a hotel yet, but I would like to get to Mount Vernon with the Tesla because it's such a long stretch that if we leave the car parked overnight, uh, at a hotel without destination charging. Keep in mind, there's no hotels between here or there with chargers, which is just crazy. There's one that has a NEMA 1450, um, but we just don't want to risk it. So we're going to get to the supercharger or get to a hotel in Mount Vernon with supercharging because if I leave the Tesla overnight and it gets cold, it'll lose battery capacity. It'll burn some charge off and they may not make it to the charger tomorrow. So we're definitely got to do that stretch tonight. And uh, off we go then. Should be a nice, simple, easy drive out there. Hopefully there's enough gas stations for the i3 to top up along the way. We have a hotel booked in Mount Vernon, but it would be nice if we could get there. Alyssa keeps making wrong turns. I think she's trying to eat food and drive and it's not working out so well. So <laughs> let's hope she can navigate us back on the highway in the correct direction. We can't have too many of these because that car needs to go 200 miles on one charge and it's fairly cold outside. It's about 40, 45 degrees out. That is, uh, that is pretty tough. Currently turning around. It keeps doing this, which is lovely. Um, not being too great on directions for some reason, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. So let me go, goodbye. So to get through this drive, I started getting very tired, so I just, blue. Okay, all right. Decided to follow Kyle, uh, he's just topping up, and um, I have a new front seat passenger here. Um, excuse me, sir. Okay, he has left the building. All right, and on to the next stop if I don't get brutally murdered by this dog's tail. Babe, are gas stations just dying or something? Yes. Is it the future electric? Obviously, the lights are off. Does it work? No. Wait, seriously? It says press, uh, hold on, I think I have to hit credit out here. 
This is so dumb. I just want to plug in the card. Please remove your card. Okay. Enter PIN. Oh, this is better. This is like the most old school gas pump. Remove nozzle. Press start on 91. You don't even have 93 out here? Oh, no. Thank you for shopping with us. I hope we get gas. Otherwise, we're screwed. This thing's out of gas and electricity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't you mock me one time for that happening? Look, I can't get this thing to go. Oh, wait, really? Yeah, from legit. Do you have to flip the nozzle thing? Uh, I'm putting mid-grade in. Oh, do I need to flip the nozzle? No, it just is not, it's not working. There's no gas. Well, it doesn't look like it's like vacant. No, it's not. I think they just shut the pumps down at night. That's unheard of. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it won't pump regular, mid-grade, or premium. Okay. Well, let's take a look to see what other stations are around here. Because uh, otherwise, we're hooking a tow strap up to this thing. <laughs> or we got to get one of those jerry cans from the U-Haul. Alright, not a huge deal, but still kind of annoying. People say electric cars are hard. You've been able to do this, no problem. We were unable to get that fueling station to go, and we uh, met a nice lady behind the counter who would not turn the station back on for us. She said it's just not possible. Somehow I believe that not to be true, but whatever. We are now heading to that gas station that's seven miles up this road in hopes that we can find some fuel the lady claims that they're open 24 hours so we're just going to coast up there we have 13 miles of battery uh, projected range we have climate control off it's 49 degrees it's really not too bad this is one of those problems if it was daytime it wouldn't be an issue sometimes the systems just don't update when stations shut off at night kind of annoying off we go then hopefully this station is online otherwise we are royally screwed Kyle now has gone seven miles further. I did not follow him because I personally only have, I don't know if you guys can see, will arrive with 3%. And if Kyle can't get any gas around here, I definitely will not be finding any electricity out here. So definitely the stretch from Louisville to Mount Vernon is just awful guys like I don't that's impressive like for one thing they don't have super like enough superchargers along that route but they don't even have enough gas stations either like I don't know what's going on if anybody knows what that like jut of land is all about please let us know because we're thoroughly um, interested and very confused to why there's not much inhabited between two pretty big cities. One very big city, one kind of big city. So yeah, uh, we'll keep you guys updated and let you know how it goes. Well, since this gas station will not pump and the other one won't, we are completely dead in the water here. Uh, we have, I don't know, about eight miles of driving range left, but that's not enough to get us anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is charge up here on the 110. My dad's gonna go fill up a jerry can in the U-Haul bring it here and we'll put it in this uh, but what i'm going to do is pretty much go in his direction once he lets me know the route that he's coming on and i'm going to head that way so i figured i'll just keep it topped up if anything so the battery doesn't lose any energy because it's cold and phantom drain on this particular i3 is not significant but definitely there especially in cold temps so this will at least keep things running uh and hopefully we'll get us going he's only about 20 minutes away really not a huge deal but man i wish ways would tell you that gas stations go offline guys i made it with four percent to spare so i'm gonna go plug in and get the room ready and actually right over there is a really nice cool little dog park so i guess i'll bring these varmints over there while <laughs> While we wait for Kyle to arrive, his dad did have to go rescue him, so now we're just playing the waiting game till he gets here. Alright, we're just gonna charge on up while 
Kyle's silly. Gas problems are happening, but we got here nice and safely. All right, friends. We are pulling out of the gas station. We have 11 miles predicted range. We topped up just a little bit on that 110 outlet. And now we are heading on Route 15, Road 15, I'm not sure, Illinois 15 this way. And my dad's going to be coming the other way. And we're just going to go so slow and hyper mile this thing in Eco Pro Plus. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. We are going to keep the speeds at 30 miles an hour. And uh, my dad's 13 miles ahead of us. We have, again, 9 miles predicted range, 11%. Uh, charge remaining. I think we're going to be totally fine. We'll just intercept them somewhere along here, pull over, fill it up with the uh, gas with the jerry can, and then we will be off to the hotel. Here it comes, the U-Haul, with hopefully some fuel because I found another gas station that's closed. <laughs> so it's here. This is down to, I think, 4% state of charge, and we're nowhere near working fuel. And so this is perfect right there. He can turn around here, no problem. Classic. Where is the fuel can? And it's on the other side. Okay. Check it out, these pumps only do 87 or diesel. <laughs> you can only drive. Pickup trucks or like a maniac. Hell yeah, look at that dude, ripping it. That was sweet. That dude was ripping the Jetta. There's, there's no doubt this is the first I-3 ever in this part of the world. I mean, I don't know. People take I-3s kind of crazy places. I don't know, man. Just always have a jerry can with you. It's the front one over here. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure because I already have it opened up. All right, here we go. All right. Wait, did, does this take diesel? <laughs> There we go, full tank of fuel. We are ready to go and let's do it. I think all is good now. It's just time to get the U-Haul back on the road. Oh, he's filling up the rest of the U-Haul with the gas can. You made it? Made it. I didn't actually run out, but I came pretty close. And good morning from Mount Vernon, Illinois. We slept in, but it's only about 7 a.m. You see, we had daylight savings time switch last night, and we were also back a time zone, so it really feels like 9 a.m. to us. Uh, so we're getting a good start with a really healthy sleep. We may have to do one more overnight stop. I imagine we will somewhere on that Kansas, Colorado border. And uh, I have the i3 preconditioning. It fully charged, of course. We're going to just top up the fuel tank at the gas station over here, although it's almost full. May as well do it while we're getting ready. And uh, if the nice thing about preconditioning the i3, just like most EVs, while it's plugged in, it's taking power from the outlets here, and that will save us some driving range while we go. So I'm using the shore power to heat up the car as we speak. The Tesla also actually has not completed charging. They're 48 amp chargers, but we pulled in at 4% and now it's at 100%. It just hasn't clicked over to completing. And now that I've run the cabin you know, heat and everything, it may not actually complete on the charge. That's totally fine. I don't want it sitting at 100% very long. That's the reason that I actually bumped it up to 100% because I knew we'd be getting out in the morning right around the time when it was done. So let's uh, go walk to Starbucks over here, let the cars warm up, the dogs are in dog mode, and then we'll hit the road. Back in the I-3 where we have full tank of fuel, full battery. I can't hold the range extender until we dip below 75% state of charge. So once we hit 75, I'll kick on the range extender. The Tesla is loaded up, charged up to 100%, still plugged in as the heater is drawing to keep the dogs warm. And let's go check on the U-Haul situation right over here on the other side of the parking lot. We're going to just turn the heater down a bit because we don't need to burn that much juice. And it's already toasty in here from preconditioning. Here's the U-Haul over here. Dad's checking on some things, I guess. Let's take a look. Great parking spot. Smart car is safe. I checked on it this morning. No one broke into our stuff. I think he's just checking. Yep, totally full in the trailer. And uh, all seems pretty good. Love it. That worked out great. And we are off. 
Lou has his head out the window. <laughs> and we are ready to rock and roll. Let's go. into St. Louis you can see the arch right there pretty cool we got to stop for fuel here in a little bit I'm gonna stop in about 10 miles that should give us a little buffer so we don't eat into the battery so far so good this is the first time I'll break away from our little convoy Alyssa's gonna stretch it all the way to Columbia and that will get her pretty far down the road she's predict predicted arrival at four or five percent so she's just drafting behind the U-Haul right now <laughs> We are stopping for gas here, just a quick fill up. We had about I don't know, a little less than a quarter of a tank left. Just need to get it filled all the way up. We don't want to spill out that one more. Come on, come on, there we go. Pretty much full right there, let it drain out. And the others are going down the road. We're gonna see if we can catch up to them. Quick pit stop, done, 1.8 gallons, four bucks, off we go. We are now shredding to catch back up to them. The little I-3 is working hard. And uh, man, just some nice wide open roads to the downtown, whatever city we're in, uh, St. Louis. Yeah, this is, certain sections are cool and certain sections are very not so cool. But um, every time I come through here, there's traffic. I guess I'm never here at 9 a.m., but you would think that would be traffic. Oh, I guess it's a weekend. Never been through here on a weekend. I usually travel during the week. We ripped it so hard, we got a little power limit on the I-3 and we blew past them. So just shredded through the city, full cannonball style. That was pretty great. And now we're just letting them catch back up and letting the car cool down. Yep, our power limit's already gone. The I-3 tends to overheat pretty quickly when you run wide open throttle. And that's just older EV technology. So my plan was great. I just filled up with gas, ripped it hard on the range extender. We burned a lot of battery, and now we're going slow behind the U-Haul again, and I'm able to charge up the battery uh, just by consuming less than the range extender is putting out. So uh, we caught back up, and we're gonna be perfectly fine. Yeah, we used a little bit more fuel than we probably needed to, but hey, at least we had a fun little race course through St. Louis. Pulling off for fuel stop number two in the I-3. We are still at 65% state of charge. I think we've only lost 5% throughout the day so far. And we need to find some gasoline. And it looks like there's a station right over here. So let's pull off, get some gas, and then we'll either rip it and catch up with them, if I can do this one quickly, or we will uh, just see them at the supercharger. Back to the highway then. I got into a fight with the gas machine over here. My card company was like, why do you keep, you know, they thought it was fraud that I keep filling up for like four or five dollars in each fill up across the country. That, I mean, I'm, that's pretty weird. And I told the guy like I'm driving a car with a tiny gas tank. He's like, what, what kind of car only takes four dollars of fuel? And I'm like, well, it's a BMW i3. And then he had to look it up. And I'm like, I just want my card to work. Uh, but he did think the i3 was pretty cool. I am uh, now going around some traffic here and we are <laughs> merging back onto the highway. That was a pretty crazy move that I just <laughs> kind of drove into oncoming traffic, but that's okay. Uh, now I'm going down the wrong way here. So it's time to make a U-turn. Oh man, I, this stop was not well planned. Not well planned at all. Um, the winds are nasty today as well. We are battling some crazy headwinds and some sidewinds. So the U-Haul is getting blown all over the place. We are killing our efficiency and the Tesla is just drafting behind. But every time my dad goes to pass a truck, the U-Haul is like, whoa, and it looks pretty sketchy from the outside. So I just uh, told them just take it slow and easy. And uh, we're just gonna see him at the supercharger. just checked the windy app and we have a 30 mile per hour wind out of the uh, northwest heading southeast so it's coming out of our front right more or less so we just keep getting all pushed around all the trucks are all over the road I've already seen one in a ditch uh, like it's seriously windy and the i3 is like whoa 
So I just hope uh, he's taking it easy in the U-Haul. I'm doing 85 in the I-3 right now, uh, allegedly. Just uh, cruising nicely. I don't really feel like going any faster than that with all this wind. We just are getting blown around. This I-3 gets caught in the wind pretty bad. We have made it to the Columbia Supercharger. You can see the U-Haul just over there. We are going to fill up with gas at this uh, station right here. But what I want to do is to not have it stop trying to charge the battery up all the way. You see, we ripped this leg super hard. Therefore, uh, the battery, obviously, the range extender couldn't keep up. I know you guys are, you understand that concept by now in the video, I am sure. So what I'm going to do is, in order to not shut the car off, keep the seatbelt on the car on and I'm going to get out of the passenger seat and what this will do is it will keep the range extender running and it'll allow me to fill up with the car on so we're going to hit park I'm going to keep my foot on the brake I'm going to put the seatbelt locked in behind me whoa the video is all over the place and then we're going to crawl out the passenger seat all right a ride with five percent battery very low not low enough in Kyle Connor terms Let's go. And there's the I3 trick. You can see I'm out of the car. No one's inside. The range extender still running, trying to charge up the battery pack. You just have to get out this door and keep the seatbelt on on that side so it doesn't shut off. Now let's fill it up. All right, let's see where we're off to. Next, I think here, and then here. We were right on the edge there. It's a 2.4 gallon tank. We just made the cutoff. Now to climb back in this way. And yes, we are good to go. We got Alyssa and the doggos charging up at 143 kilowatts here. Pretty good. That was a nice long stretch, wasn't it, dog? <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, guys. The i3 is just sitting on the range extender charging up. I got out the passenger seat. I can actually lock the car like this. You see it beeps at you, but the doors are locked, and it'll just sit there charging on gas, which we need it to do. And uh, let's go get some Jimmy Johns. Just finished up some good lunch. What are you charged up to? 75%, that was pretty good. Nice and fast charge. This thing's still running on the range extender. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see what it charged up to. We are at 54% state of charge. I think we left it at 34, so we gained 20% by it running pretty good. We're gonna burn the fuel anyway, but uh, it's always good to have more of a buffer in the battery for these big stretches with all this headwind. We need, we need that room. If we were stuck at 6% state of charge where the normal I3s come from the factory, where it kicks on the range extender, we'd be limited to like 40 miles an hour. It'd be really bad. Look at her, Ellie doesn't want to get back in the car. She said, no, mom, I don't want to, please. She can ride with me. What? Ellie, are you riding with me? Hi, sweet girl. Hi. Uh, hey, love. That's a good girl. That's my girl, I love you. Oh, you're sniffing, yeah, because that's all your food stuff back there. Now we gotta fix that leash, it was hanging down there. That would be a bad situation. I don't think we have it hooked up to the dogs. Usually we unhook them as soon as they go in the car. I jumped over to the other side, talked to my dad for a second, and now we're heading out onto the highway. Here we go. All three of us together again. And Ellie, you're with us this time. This is great news. You're a great road tripper. about to receive the nectar of the gods, peanut butter. <laughs> wow, that was aggressive. We 
had a quick splash and dash back there and we're already caught back up. Uh, maybe it's been about 20 minutes, but yeah, caught back up cruising through Missouri. Uh, not much to see around here except a lot of fields and combine harvester. It's pretty cool though. All right, the U-Haul is taking an exit. I'm not sure why, but we could definitely use a little bit of fuel. I was going to go up a couple exits, but may as well stop now, coordinate, maybe get some snackaroos. What do you think, Ellie? I knew we just ate, but you could use a little something, don't you think? A little water, perhaps? And, uh, yeah, let's just see what's uh, going on with the U-Haul. And we have reached the top of the U-Haul's tank here. Let's take a look at the damage. 50 gallons almost. Fuel was really cheap here. I think that's one of the reasons Dad stopped. 175 a gallon. Pretty good. Let's close this thing up. I'm going to jump in the I-3. Ellie. Yeah, we're right here. <laughs> She's like, oh, I wasn't looking for you. Arrived with more than enough charge. So let's just go ahead and plug in anyways. Next stop, Topeka, Kansas. Should get there with 12%. I think we're ready to go. We went for a little run and now he's checking out our neighbors. So, all right, let's unplug and go. We are cruising along just fine, about to go through Independence and then Kansas City, of course. We'll go through Kansas City, Missouri, which is the big Kansas City, and then Kansas City, Kansas, which is on the other side, which is the smaller section. That always is a little weird. Uh, but uh, we're going to go through there, and then we're going to meet Alyssa in Topeka because she's already finished supercharging at Independence. No reason for us to get off the highway. It's like a mile off the highway at the Bass Pro Shop. Cool supercharger, but kind of out of the way. We're just going to keep on trucking me and the I-3 and the U-Haul in front of me and we're going straight to Topeka. We are about to get off to this rest stop, fill up with gas. You can see we're down to below a quarter of a tank, got an eighth of a tank. And I think this is the one with the DC charger. It is, yes, this is the new charge point uh, CPE 250 unit that I saw go in uh, a couple months ago. Oh, there's two. I guess I did realize there was two. I noticed it on the way back as well. Not that we need to DC charge. I kind of think we'll plug in just to confirm that they work if no one's plugged in on plug share. If they have, we'll leave it. But uh, yeah, those look pretty good. Nice new units for sure. Fast chargers, electric vehicle charging only. Love it. Let's uh, unfortunately put some gas in this car and get going and maybe we'll plug in for a half a second. Why not? It looks like plug share. Lots of people have used them. All good. Looks like a Model X just left. It was actually checked into it. Uh, so I don't think we'll plug in. They're 125 kilowatt though, which is one of the higher outputs I've seen for these newer units. Definitely glad to see that. We need more than 150 kilowatt charging for long distance travel. Oh, check it out. There's a J1772 port as well. This is a great little service center spot. Love it. All right, back on the road. I arrived to Topeka, Kansas with 7%. Let's go plug in. We are now heading out of the supercharger here at uh, Topeka, Kansas at the Arby's. Always a sketchy supercharger at night. I don't think I've ever been here middle of the day, maybe once or twice. Anyway, jumping in the I-3, Alyssa is gonna charge here for about 10 more minutes. She's right over there. And uh, we're gonna head to Salina, but uh, we're gonna drive slowly and efficiently in this. So she will far surpass us on the highway. And uh, I'm just gonna follow the U-Haul. Beautiful sunset almost here in Kansas. Alyssa is actually right behind us. Uh, we merged onto the highway after filling up with gas, I did, at the same time she was there. So uh, pretty cool and lovely drive. We are pulling in to the Salina Supercharger here at the Holiday Inn Express. Always a great supercharger. You can actually run in, they'll let you use the pool. You can have the breakfast here if you're early. Always a good spot. Looks like Alyssa's going to have to share 
with one of these cars here. I would say anyone but the Black Model X because we know they just pulled in because we've been road tripping with them. Alyssa's right behind us and here we are pulling into the next stop. All right, it's time to leave this supercharger and go to the Hayes one. Blue had a lovely fetch session, huh, buddy? All in those fields over there, which is great when we're able to find stuff like that for him to run around. All right, let's go. Many fuel stops and beautiful sunsets down now. We have been ripping it so hard, the range extender just can't keep up at all. We're at 5% state of charge. I had to drop the speed. 77 is about where it can keep up. It uh, doesn't really like to go any faster than that. It just loses, uh, you know, obviously it can't, it, this is sort of equilibrium. So we're gonna go to Hayes Supercharger here in Kansas. Uh, our friend Dave, EV Dave, great YouTube channel if you like to see stuff with any Tesla. He actually owns pretty much the mall and he's getting a Roadster. Awesome guy, uh, good friend, donated the Tesla for the Pikes Peak effort this year. He just happens to be coming back from Wyoming, so we're gonna see Dave for a quick high and by. And just behind the supercharger is an Electrify America DC fast charger that we're gonna put the i3 on and charge this up on DC just to, again, build up that battery buffer because Kansas, we are just flying through it and uh, we don't wanna have this limitation anymore. So we'll put some DC charge into this thing at 50 kilowatt and uh, we'll just let it charge up for as long as we are there. Here's Dave with the EV Dave YouTube channel and uh, link in the description, of course. And Alyssa's charging up the Tesla over here. Dave's gonna go pick me up at the Electrify America station right over that way. All right, we are charging up here in Hayes. Um, we are meeting up with Evie Dave, a lot of you might know him, and Kyle is charging up at the Electrify America at the Walmart behind me. You can't see it, but you can see Ellie. Um, and now there's Blue. So, charging up, we're racking up at 143 kilowatt, and um, just saying hello and then hitting on the road again. I've gone on the app, initiated my charging session. I pulled over to this one here just because I wanted to leave the Chatamo open in case a leaf pulled up. We're initiating and we should be charging. Uh, I'm not sure what the costs are in Kansas, if they're by kilowatt hour or by the, by the minute, but we will find out. And I plugged into a 350, no need for this, but of course no other cars are here and there's another open 350 kilowatt in case a lucid or a tycon comes in it is by the minute and 12 cents a minute is just so cheap for charging this is cheaper than home electricity at certain speeds you can see we're at seven percent ramping up nicely should go all the way to 50 kilowatt here it looks like it's working its way up nice pretty convenient the superchargers are right there also Take a look at Dave's Model Y performance sitting really nice on these Martian wheels. You know how much we love Martian wheels for Teslas. I have them for my car. Dave now has them for his. And Drew, who owns Martian, runs Martian, is a fantastic dude and makes some really freaking cool wheels. You join us now in Hayes, the i3s on the Charger that you saw. Alyssa's driving the Model 3, and Dave, your car looks so good on those Martians. Thank you. Have you noticed an improvement in range or you know, anything like this? From the Uber turbines, I've noticed that the uh, feel lighter. Well, that's right off. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, totally lighter and responsive and very quiet. And these are. Um, Pirelli P7 all season tires. Okay. Okay, and I got them obviously for cold weather. Sure. And uh, they are just handle well and they're very quiet. No, oh, that's cool. Good so to I'm hear. I'm very happy with it. Well, it looks great. I haven't seen a Model Y on Martians in person yet in the uh, 20 inch setup. That's what that is, right? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, it looks like that's the right size. Yeah. 21's you know. a little big for that car. 
One thing I noticed that the maximum range in the car increased from 270 to 298. Really? Yeah. Because oh, you put to put in the different wheel that size. That is correct. Ah, interesting. Yeah, Very so cool. So I'm testing now whether it's going to actually do more range, which I think it will. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think it'll do more. Although, you know, uh, those 21 inch wheels are actually pretty efficient for what they are. Right. Um, because they're more efficient than the Model 3 on these 20 inch track wheels. They're bigger and they really carve the air quite nicely. Yeah, and I'm really happy so far. So I've got good. another 800 or so miles and uh, I'll let you know. Cool, sounds good. Safe good travels, deal. fun running into Thank you in the middle of Kansas. Yeah, heck yeah. Thanks, Kyle. And you guys have a safe trip. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Given up driving the i3 or something? No, you're driving me over to the i3. I thought. Oh. Yeah, it's cold. 50 degrees outside. Oh, okay. Let's just say it's 49. That sounds colder. Okay. Just put yeah. this thing in drive and let's go. All right, let's go. All right, there we go. Well, that worked out perfectly. And the time it took to get the Tesla up to 80%, the i3 is at 80%. Granted, that's a lot less energy over, you know, for that 80%. But hey, it worked out well. Uh, I think it was only $3 to fill up the i3. That charging was so cheap, uh, really worked out quite well. And now let's head on the road. As soon as we hit 75% state of charge, I'll kick on the range extender and we'll be good to go. I'll probably top it up with gas since we're already stopped and off the highway and we're near a half a tank. I'll just swing by and top it up at a fueling station somewhere over here. We just filled up for gas at this little rinky-dink gas station that's actually closed. I was really worried about it because I didn't want to run into the same situation as last night. We almost did, but thankfully these pumps were actually on. So now we can make the stretch over to the Colby Supercharger in the I-3. And my dad pulled off in the U-Haul just to ensure that we could get some fuel in the BMW. But we could. We are topped up all the way. And off we go then. Perfect. All right, I have arrived at Colby Supercharger, the one with all the dog parts and stuff like that. All right, time to plug on in. Nobody is here with me. All by myself. Okay. All right, seems like it's pegged at 126-ish. Okay, now 127. Kyle and his dad are on their way here. You little pretty kitty cats. That blue is not thrilled about. But they're super cute. Hey, sugar, I just heard. Oh. Good morning from the view outside of our hotel. I have the i3 plugged into a wall outlet over there. Uh, we slept pretty good. It's pretty cold. It's below freezing out there right now. It's about 31 degrees Fahrenheit. So the Tesla is going to be chilly and we need just a little bit more juice to get to Lyman, Colorado. There is another supercharger in Goodland about 40 miles west of here. So I don't know if we'll drive to Goodland or my dad says he's already up. I haven't showered yet, and I'm thinking maybe he'll just go take it over to the supercharger and just let it charge slow while we're getting ready, and we'll meet him over there because that's where the Starbucks is. We'll figure it out. Oh, the Smart looks like it's in good shape. Everything's looking nice. Do a cold start on the F650 V10. Hell yeah. Let's see how this thing starts up. My dad said he left the keys in it for us. So let's give her a crank here. Oh, yeah, keys are right here. All right, here we go. We'll just let it, no glow plugs, it's a gas motor. So we'll just, instant start. Awesome truck, heater on. And we're just gonna let this thing warm up for a second. And here on the other side of the building is the only wall outlet that we found on the outside of the building. I set the I3 to precondition. Let's see if it actually did. And yes, fully charged. And that little uh, bacon strips on the screen there means it's warming up. So that worked out really well. It uh, should have just completed charging. We don't actually have the app for this car. I've been meaning to pay $50 a year for it after the four years since news of 2016, but their website won't actually allow me to pay. It's kind of wonky. So anyway, uh, it's fine. 
We don't really drive the car too, too much, but I would like to get the app, especially for mobile preconditioning. But at least from the key, I've coded the alarm button for a short press to run the heater. So from the room this morning, I hit the button and it reached over. Got the U-Haul moved over here, started right up, drove great. And uh, man, it's really cold out here. So I'm gonna get the mobile connector in the front trunk and we're gonna run down the street to the supercharger where my dad is currently charging, I think at 15 or 17 kilowatts, almost nothing at 70%. And that's mainly because the battery just got so cold last night, but we expected it. Good morning. Hi, Bluezer boy. Oh, he's excited. She's excited. Here we go. Right, here we are pulling into the supercharger here in Colby, Kansas. Love it. We're pulling in this way. And uh, I think I see the car charging up over here. We're gonna have to go slow over all of these fuel tank filler nonsense things. There he is, charging up. Looking good. Charging real slow, it sounds like. That's the thing, if you ever stay overnight at a hotel with the Tesla, always charge it the night before, especially when it's cold, because the battery will not charge fast in the morning. And uh, certainly you have to leave the car at a high state of charge, but you know what, it's fine. Uh, especially because 17 kilowatts means it would be over four or five hours to charge that car up. That's some cold weather supercharging right there. We're gonna charge it up to get to Lyman, Colorado. Let's see how much it thinks to get there. It says 6% to get there. I think that should be fine. Let's see how many miles it is. Lyman, 142 miles it looks like. Oh, it's the crow flies. Blue, you're in the way. Come on, get back. Blue, back buddy, good boy. Uh, yeah, 144 miles. So we should be good to go at 85%. We'll just let it charge up. We'll get our Starbucks and then we will hit the road. I think my dad's gonna take on the Tesla this leg. I'll drive the U-Haul. Out on the road we go. There's the other two in the I-3 and the Tesla. And we are merging onto I-70 West. I think we will make it to Lyman, Colorado. And that is the supercharger at that Arby's. Alyssa doesn't like Arby's. I do. Maybe that's a good spot for lunch uh, or I guess an early lunch, late breakfast. Anyway, wide open throttle. Here we go. That's to the floor. 30 miles an hour. <laughs> and we hit 35. Still floored. All right. Engine temperature is coming up. Transmission temp is still cool. But hey, the quickest way to warm up an engine is that wide open throttle. But seriously, don't listen to that advice. Here we go. Merging onto the highway using the torque of the big V10. And, uh, you know, it's a rental truck. So it's got to work hard for us. And it certainly is wide open throttle. We got tow haul mode on, which is the equivalent of sport mode. <laughs> and we are running it. Here we go. Big flat plains of Kansas. Goodbye, Colby. What a nice town that was. Off we go to Lyman. Still floored, 60 miles an hour. Still floored, 65. Really pulls strong up at 4,000 RPM. All right, so listen to this thing scream. Still revving out. There we go. Still floored, 70 miles an hour. Nice, this thing drives great. We're cruising along at 80, and there goes Alyssa shredding it in the Tesla, of course. Off to Lyman. I see Blue wagging his tail through the window. What a good dog. So, very interesting. I had to take a quick pit stop, and when I stopped, it was at 4%. Now it's climbing down a lot. Um, but when I put it back in the nav, it was at 14, and I just bumped up my driving because I was driving slower to compensate. And now it's all the way back up to around like 10 or 11. It's teetering. Uh, just seeing what it's going to be like at 84 miles an hour. But if it stays like that, that'd be nice and I could play catch up and catch up to Kyle and his dad. So let's see. We are now leaving the bumpy roads of Kansas. Uh, it's so bad. <laughs> leaving Kansas, come again. And welcome to colorful, 
Colorado, friends. We have made it. Oh, yeah. Wide open throttle. Slowed down. Here we go. The roads are worse. <laughs> They're really bad, actually. But nice to be in the great state of Colorado. I guess the BMS was off by a little bit, got a little confused, so, which is fine, I'll make it, no worries. All right, well, the Rex is off, unfortunately, so we're just running on battery power. Here he goes, backing it in to fuel it up next to the big Bertha U-Haul right here. This thing is a freaking tank, loves to just sit at 77 miles an hour, cruises no problem. Here goes the i3. Filling up the I-3 and filling up the U-Haul at the same time. Pretty good. This one needs premium, of course. The other just takes 85 octane out here, Colorado. Man, I wonder why it's so poor. We also don't get 93 octane, we only get 91. Just trying to get every last drop. Oh crap, overfilled it. Gosh, that's not good at all. Uh, bummer, sorry to all the Colorado environmentalists, I'm sure I will receive a bill in the mail. Uh, brutal. That's, you know what? If BMW just put a bigger gas tank in this thing, we wouldn't have to worry about it. Would you like a receipt? No. Okay. Well, that sucks. Filling this one up. Let's take a look over here and see how much charge the smart car has lost in this cold. I put it on the trailer with 39% state of charge. I believe that's what we shipped it with and we're at 35% state of charge. So it hasn't lost much, but certainly lost a little bit. A lot of that's probably due to the cold. So nothing this smart car isn't used to, all good. Certainly good transportation battery percentage. We'll leave it unlocked so the alarm doesn't go off. And this thing is just chugging up the fuel. Let's see, yeah, already at 30 gallons here, yikes. And uh, Alyssa just passed us on the highway. She just uh, beeped as she went by, and so now she is off to Lyman. We will be there as our next stop. This pump must have a $100 limit, and that's all we were able to get in there. Won't let you pump anymore, but 100 bucks, that'll get us a few miles down the road. Now we just put this fuel cap on, and we are fueled up and ready to rock and roll. Extender on. Do you have your range extender on? So click, click number one and then push down on the iDrive controller. Yeah, on the, across the dashboard, there's a row of buttons. Yeah, just click number one. On there, are literally physical buttons that go one through six. And then click hold state of charge. Good, okay, nice. Off to Lyman, I'll follow you out. All right, merging on the highway. I love all these gates here. They close the road when the snow gets so bad so you can't actually go on them. We are achieving wide open throttle, folks. This is all she has got. We are pegged to the floor. 4,200 RPM shift point. This likes to utilize the torque of the motor rather than the horsepower of the mighty Ford V10. And they have since replaced this engine in the uh, non-commercial applications with the 6.7 liter or 7 point something liter 7.2 v8 i forget what it is but it's called like the godzilla motor or something like this and uh, they reserve the v10 for commercial applications only and that's because it's a true workhorse of an american engine look at that thing chugging 4,000 rpm as we merge up to speed here still floored there we go this car can't even achieve the speed limit on these roads. I think the limiter is 74 or 75 miles per hour GPS and the speed limit 75. <laughs> we are going for an uphill overtaking maneuver of the I-3. Look at that thing, it looks so tiny down there. <laughs> there he is, driving the I-3. We're floored, that's all she'll do. There we go. 
chugging. We're gonna fill the I-3 up with gas. My dad's gonna stay inside. He made it with the range extender still on. He didn't run it out, that's good. And I don't think he wants to climb out the passenger seat. So I'll just have him sit in the car. I'll walk over and pump the fuel for him. Hi, buddy. Hello. Hello from the Lyman, Colorado Supercharger here at the Arby's. It's nice and early in the morning. It's about 8.30 a.m. here because we're in mountain time. And how was your drive over? Great. Good. You guys having a good time supercharging here? Yeah. Hey, Abel. We need to clean your face. All right, we're gonna see what happens if we start the truck at wide open throttle. It will not kick over and lift up. Yeah. So most modern cars these days won't let it fire if your foot's hard on the accelerator pedal. Nice job to Ford. We are now turning onto our street. We've just turned on in Fort Collins. Nice little drive. I think the I-3 must be out of gas and gotta be out of electricity. Must be coming in on fumes because uh, it's been a while since our last stop. And yep, nice to be in the neighborhood. Let's get this thing parked up at the house and uh, see what the situation is. We actually have not been inside of the house, so we hope it's nice. And as you can see, we have arrived to the new house. I3 made it just fine all the way to Colorado. So pretty nice. Time to do the hard work of unloading and seeing what we've damaged during the move because we hit some big bumps on the way over here. All right, last charging stop of the whole trip. Really didn't have to do this, but because there is no superchargers in Fort Collins, we actually did. So let's go plug in. And like I said, we've arrived to the new house. This is it here. I'm sure we'll show you around it in a future video, but that was the road trip out. Alyssa is here. She's just picking up dog food. You know, the dogs eat raw food at some guy's house in Loveland, and uh, which is a couple towns over. We're gonna unload the smart car, get it charging in the garage, again, it's at 35%, and we made it. So thanks for all the help, Dad. Okay, see you on the next one, bye-bye. Here she is, she's arrived. She's gonna parallel park it, oh no. This is not gonna go well. Wow. She's within six feet of the curb. That's impressive. It's either six feet or she's curbed it. So I'd take the six feet. She's already curbed every one of those wheels. <laughs> 